Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the Weekend Wellness Hour show. Very excited to have a new guest and recent new friend of mine who will be joining us today to talk all about kidneys. So Dr. Tatiana Tom came over here to the U.S. and she has been studying kidney function for a long time, many years, 17 years she's been in the medical world. And I was very excited to have her on because we haven't had anyone come talk about kidney health and one thing I like about her is she has a holistic approach. She is all about lifestyle, which many of you know is something I really find is important because if we can heal our bodies ourselves, why not do that? Why, why avoid, why not avoid procedures and other, other invasive techniques? So thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Tom. I really appreciate having you here. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. That's wonderful. Do you mind sharing with us a little bit about your background? I find it fascinating that you came here from Brazil. And can you share a little bit about your journey? Yeah, sure. Um, so when I was in medical school, which I started in the year of 2000, um, I did a lot of bench research right from the beginning. Research, you know, with molecules and, you know, lab rats and things like that. And um, for a while, um, that was a lot of my focus in the beginning of medical school. And I did a exchange um, research here, one of the Harvard labs here in Boston, which where it's where I live now. And when I when I came, I was fascinated by you know the advance, the the academia, and actually, I met a guy who is now my husband, <laughs> and. Uh, and then after that, of course, my fascination with, you know, the high academia and then my boyfriend uh, led me to do more, more clinical rotations here, you know, at the uh, Harvard hospitals. And um, then I decided to, after that, pursue more of an academic career. Mm-hmm. And uh, I came to the US. And I have to say, even though my research right at the beginning uh, most of them were not related to kidney. Um, my kind of flirt with the kidneys started right from the beginning. And um, I always thought the kidneys were the smarter, well, the nephrologist, which the name we call the doctors that take care of the kidneys. We do believe the kidneys are the most intelligent organ in the body. <laughs> <laughs> that rings true when you have a specialty, of course, right? Yeah. So... Yes, uh, so that's how I came to the U.S. I had, uh, there were two parts, right? The part that I met my husband yeah. and we wanted to be together, but um, also the part that I was very fascinated with academia and mm-hmm. I came to do the research projects here and then some clinical rotations. And I was, you know, in awe of the advancements of the, the excellence in everything here. So I came for those two reasons. Oh, that's wonderful. And so you did your clinical work here. You specialized in internal medicine and nephrology and kidneys. So why kidneys? You said you think it's the most intelligent um, organ or, <laughs> um, but were you, did you have a background in it or just, you just became fascinated? Um, I just became fascinated, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting enough, at that point, I think I didn't have a full consciousness of the kidney history in my family, but later I understood that actually one of my grandparents uh, passed off kidney uh, failure complications. And at that time, it didn't speak to me, but later it just made the whole thing even more fascinating to understand and especially to you know focus on prevention mm-hmm. because as my grandfather you know passed away of kidney uh, disease complications, um, many, many, many people uh, get their kidney problems, not out of a genetic mutation or, you know, let's say bad luck. 90% of people that end up with kidney failure end up in dialysis. 90% of them, it's from preventable causes, things that if you take care, you know, earlier in life, you will not face later kidney problems that are so severe to the point that you lose kidney function and you become such a sick person. So, and we know that nowadays more and more, there is more research and more understanding of how the genetic 
uh, our genetic function and the epigenetic of it and how uh, our emotions play a huge role in it. Um, I do tend to focus more and more on that because that's the main thing we can control. And again, if we don't control our emotions, we do not follow instructions. Uh, I have yeah. plenty of patients and you know, by now I'm graduated from medical school for 17 years. I have 17 years of clinical experience. Mm -hmm. And I know very well, if you don't get the patient to change their mentality, if they don't buy your idea, and if you don't spend time explaining to them why and what for they need to make the changes, uh, they do not take the medication. They do not buy into the lifestyle changes. They do not do those changes. So we, I, I, I feel like half of my job is doctor, half of my job is coach of my patients because I'm always working on changing their mentality towards their health, yeah. towards their life. And I completely agree with you. And it's, it's hard to get people to believe that their mentality is so critical to their health, but it's true time in and time out. It, it shows up that same exact way. So can you go through a little bit about why kidneys are important? Why is it the most important or intelligent organ in, in your world? And then maybe we can start to dive in after that a little bit about, okay, what is the mentality that we need to have? So let's go through, yeah, first, what, what do the kidneys do? Yeah, so, you know, great majority of people, healthy people have two kidneys mm -hmm. and um, they do the same job, basically the whole entire blood, our entire blood gets pumped through the kidneys. Uh, we filter the entire blood a hundred times per day. And uh, the kidneys are so important because they have, well, several functions. The main function is to um, filter in and filter out the toxins that most of them, the liver breaks down to become what we call water soluble, meaning, mm -hmm you know, so the kidney can push out with the water. So pretty much is a organ that filters out and excrete, you know, get rid of toxins. So if your kidneys are not working well, you end up building toxins in your body. And of course that has so many consequences and that's how we measure the kidney function through your blood work. We actually measure certain toxins that build up and we know, of course there are, you know, thousands and thousands of them, but Research, with research, we have this number that we, with this molecule that is part of the catabolism, the breakdown of protein that we call creatinine. So this is how we measure kidney function. We measure the amount of this toxin build up in the blood. Mm -hmm. So you want it low, but I'm just as an exemplifying to be, to be a practical number or name, okay. but the filter does that, it filters the blood 100 times a day, filtering toxins out. But also it, for, to do that, we need a minimal amount of water to produce urine, right, the pee, mm -hmm. a minimum amount. So in order to release the toxins that we need, we need to produce, get rid of at least um, a quart. Um, you know, mean 16 ounces mm -hmm. of, of pee per day. If you're okay. producing less than 16 ounces of pee, half a liter, mm -hmm. you are not getting rid of all the toxins because that's the maximum concentration capability of the kidney. But with age, the kidneys are not able to concentrate as much. So you need more. A lot of people, you know, with age, they drink less water, but actually yeah. they needed to drink more. Interesting. Oh, and it's not just that, right? 16 ounces is, the, is what you're going to get rid of, the spare amount, right? Mm -hmm. But we lose water through our pores, right? We sweat, even without realizing. You cannot wait until you're dripping sweat or your clothing is wet to think you sweat. It evaporates, right? It goes into the air. And as we talk, the air is humidified. So we lose a lot of water through our speech. The more you talk, the more you lose water. And of course, through your stools. So we need a minimum, minimum, very minimum of 32 ounces of water per day to have your basic functions and excrete, get rid of those toxins. If you're not drinking this very minimum of 32 ounces, you are building up toxins and that's how people get sick too. 
Yeah, because 32 ounces isn't very much, but I know a lot of people don't actually do that. And last week I had a lady come on and talk about saliva and travel and how we often, when we're traveling, we don't drink water because you don't want to get up to go to the bathroom. So, I mean, that makes it even worse on your kidneys. Wow. Yeah, there is actually lots of research nowadays that has proven that one of the risk factors for kidney disease mm -hmm. is actually low fluid intake, meaning you don't drink mm -hmm. enough and your kidneys are chronically dry, a chronically low blood flow to the kidneys because you're just not drinking enough. So there you go. One of the things you can do to prevent kidney disease is drinking enough water. And the very minimum that you can do, let's say in a cold day that you're not sweating much, you didn't exercise on that day, even someone with very low metabolism, let's say an elderly person that does not exercise, just sit the whole day at home, that person needs 32 ounces of water. Of course, when you exercise, when you're outside, you know, especially in the heat, in the sun, you need a whole lot more. There is uh, research from the military that shows that a high intensity exercise, you lose 32 ounces of water uh, per hour of exercise through the sweat. 32 wow. ounces per hour of have exercise. So if you're exercising, you definitely want to add 32 ounces for that time you're exercising. But yeah. ideally, you want to, you know, in average, most people with a decent metabolism want to, to hit that 64 ounces. Yeah, now, is there a frequency and how often you should urinate to help um, with kidneys and to show there's good function there? Is that something? Well, it's complicated. So okay. let me see if I can make sense for people that, because, you know, people with the less you're peeing, meaning you're retaining water or not drinking enough because there are plenty of people. And of course, this is not normal. It's yeah. more pathological problem, like a disease. Right. There are plenty of people that are here in my office that come and say, I swear to God, I drink a ton of water. Of course, there are people that say, I drink a ton of water per day, like two glasses. And I'm like, what? <laughs> there are plenty wow. of those people that think a ton of water are two glasses of water. It's not even okay. 16 ounces, some people, but yeah. I, I just clarify with numbers here. So we're yeah. crystal clear, mm -hmm. but um, there are a lot of people that say, no, 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 I do drink 64 ounces of water per day, but what happens is that they are retaining and you can see the swelling through their legs. Sometimes it's not clear the swelling. You can retain up to five pounds of fluid on each leg like 10 pounds of fluid without seeing what we call peeling edema, something that marks it. Some mm -hmm. people, even the socks, like tight socks, would not mark their skin with those dents, even when they have so much fluid on board. And then one way that it shows is that when you lay down, so you're in a recumbent position, mm -hmm. like, you know, in the horizontal, yeah. that fluid that was being pulled down by gravity when you're standing and sitting with your legs down, you know, once gravity is not pulling it down, and of course, all those vein problems and whatnot, when you have the recumbent position, like laying down, that fluid slowly start getting reabsorbed. And then that's the case of those people that says, I just go to the bathroom once per day or twice, but then at night, I wake up three, four, five times. One of the problems is that you're retaining in your legs, and that can be caused from too much salt uh, ingestion. And the other one, is uh, incompetent veins, like varicose veins. Mm -hmm. Also, there are other conditions too mm -hmm. that makes you retain uh, fluid, but then it's not so common. Mostly it's just because of uh, lack of exercise, bad veins, but especially too much salt intake. Um, uh -huh. But if you are, most people that don't have those problems, don't have mm -hmm. those health problems, that, which are not that common. Mm -hmm. um, if they're really drinking those 64 ounces of water per day, those two liters, they really should be going to the bathroom every three or four hours, which okay. is good. It's normal. You are getting rid of toxins. You do want to do that. Otherwise yeah. you get sick. Exactly. And actually now people will wake up. Uh, one of the reasons people retain fat, you know, they gain weight mm -hmm. is actually to dilute, to water down in fat. <laughs> so 
the toxins because you're just not getting rid of and if the toxins keep you know rolling in your blood flow in your bloodstream mm -hmm. it will punch holes in your arteries it will cause you know plaques cholesterol calcium plaques out of inflammation yeah oh that's fascinating i didn't even think about that um that's incredible to even think about how fat can actually help dilute your toxins to to get you through the day so how does all of this kind of work in terms of our habits? So we know dehydration obviously is a big factor in our kidneys. What are some other daily habits that we might have that would have an impact on our kidneys? So one of them that which is huge in a lot of people is the habit of taking what we call NSAIDs. NSAIDs is acronym for non-steroid inflammatory, anti-inflammatory drugs, mm -hmm. which are the very famous ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin, Naproxen, Aleve, Goodies powder, BC powder, uh, a high dose aspirin, like 500 milligrams, not mm -hmm. the baby one or the 325. So those medications, those painkillers, right? People take for headaches and, you know, joint aches, muscle aches, um, menstrual cramps, uh, mm -hmm. all kinds of aches. Yeah. They have a lot of serious side effects, especially if taken um, once in a blue moon. Of course, not a big deal, but you mm -hmm. definitely want to increase your water intake on those times that you take those anti-inflammatories because um, the effects of them, they have two major side effects. One of them is actually uh, decrease the blood flow to the kidneys. So you are causing a relative, um, what we call ischemia, like a mm -hmm. you know, heart attack. It's like a yeah. kidney attack. And actually, they can affect the kidney. They can the harm, damage the kidney in three different ways. One of them is decreasing the blood flow to the kidneys. What happens is that they contract, they tighten up the artery and you receive less blood flow. And if you're dehydrated, you really don't receive much blood flow there, which means you're not going to pee as much and you're not going to dump out the toxins you need either. You're going to be retaining those toxins. Mm -hmm. The second way it can harm the kidneys is that we know we can cause inflammatory reaction in some people's kidney. You know, those people that are very allergic, allergenic, mm -hmm. they have allergies to all kinds of things. They have like those environmental allergies, like, you know, rhinitis, they eat a lot. Those people tend to have more, what we call um, an inflammatory nephritis, meaning they mount an inflammatory reaction in the kidney that causes scar down. You lose kidney tissue for mm -hmm. scar which is a terrible thing. And those tissues do not come back. They just become scarred out when you lost, lose a portion of um, your kidneys. So, and there is another way you can harm your kidneys, which is a, a severe form of a contraction of all the vessels and you receive almost no blood flow when you even have necrosis, meaning death of a part of a tissue, which is kind of like, you know, a heart attack, but like it's a mm -hmm. kidney attack. We don't call that, yeah. but we call necrosis of the papilla. So you definitely have to be super careful with those medications. And I know a lot of people keep popping them and they end up in my office. That's how I know too. There is lots of research, of course, mm -hmm. but you know, they have a headache, they take it. Sometimes it takes several times a day. People with a joint ache, joint pain, it would be much better off taking Tylenol than mm -hmm. ibuprofen, aproxin, Motrin, you know, Advil, because, um, and also that can punch a hole in your stomach and cause severe ulcers and yeah. bleeding. Yeah. That's another common side effect. So you want to avoid as much as you can. Right. Yeah. I, I know I always try to get people to think about, okay, if you have pain, look at other options besides medications, because people think that these common medications have no side effects and they say, oh, you're just, you're just too sensitive. I'm like, no, they're really affecting you, yeah. even if you can't sense it right now. So. And you said the key of this, if you have pain, meaning your body is giving you an alarm, pain mm -hmm. is good. It's telling you, hey, 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 something yeah. is wrong here, dude. You got to do something about it. Mm -hmm. There is something wrong. How about you go to your doctor or mm -hmm. I don't know, go to a chiropractor, mm -hmm. go to a physical therapist, mm -hmm. uh, go to, you know, someone specialized yeah. on this to see what's going on, going on, right? I'm sure... You know, in your case, a lot of times your breathing is wrong, your posture is wrong, mm -hmm. and those things need to be fixed. I don't know, physical therapy, you know, the breathing techniques, mm -hmm. uh, go do yoga, 
99% uh, of back pain is caused due to lack of exercise and stretching, right? So um, something is wrong and that pain is good. It's an alarm saying, before you break this for good, let's try to fix whatever problem is. And, you know, in your kidneys, drink more water, stop the anti-inflammatories. Mm -hmm. Well, kidneys actually don't hurt. It's very yeah. rare that a kidney will hurt unless they're blocked, usually because mm -hmm. of a stone. That's pretty mm -hmm. much the only time the kidneys will uh, hurt. And that's one thing that I hear every day in my office, like 10 times, 20 times at least. Oh. No, 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 my kids are fine. They don't hurt. I'm peeing all the time. Oh my goodness. For, you, for your kidneys to hurt, usually you have to have crystals or a stone and they usually are blocking or passing and like, you know, scratching and everything. And, and, but some people don't even have symptoms actually. They can have a blockage on the kidney for years and have absolutely no symptoms. We just find as what we call an incidental finding, like, you know, by chance, because of other reason, like, let's say you had a little car accident, you end up in the emergency room, they do a CAT scan of your whole body and they can find a kidney blocked. I've seen many people like that. And of course, a blocked kidney chronically can make you lose completely the kidney function, or at least that one kidney. Mm -hmm. But some people, even on dialysis, um, they pretty much have a function. Dialysis means you don't even have 10% of your kidney function. So if your kidney function is less than 10%, you are so intoxicated that usually we offer you a machine to filter your blood. But even people on dialysis may still produce some urine, but it's what we call dumb urine. It means it's getting rid of some of the water, but it's a bland urine, does not have toxins in it. It's not filtering out the toxins, it's not you know, dumping it out. It's just building up in your blood. So peeing enough and not having pain is absolutely not a sign of kidney dysfunction. You pretty much have to do the blood work. That's interesting. And so when you're talking about taking in water to make sure you're hydrated, do you mean pure water or can it be other substances? I know a lot of people don't like to drink just water. I had to convert. I switched to completely just water, but I gave up juice, fruit juices. I gave up other types of drinks over the years. I know people say, well, I drink plenty of things, but you know, most of it's wine at night or I drink coffee. And so I have my coffee and my wine and that should be enough fluids. Is that the case? Yeah. So um, you want to prefer to drink just plain water. It's okay. Okay. Not great to drink like flavored water, but the other things you definitely don't want to be drinking like soda. Why? Because um, there are many, many reasons, but I'll tell you that you're really getting a whole lot of sugar in that a whole lot of other toxins, but especially the colas, doesn't matter if it's diet or not, the dark sodas, right? The colas like Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, uh, root beer, and there are some other names, right? Of other mm -hmm. colas. They are pure phosphoric acid almost. They are so acid. And that phosphoric acid not only would punch a hole, in your stomach and in your arteries, if the body didn't have a buffering system, which is the bones, the calcium in your muscles, in your teeth, and your bones, which means it's causing osteoporosis, right? It's making your bones and your teeth weak and porous, but also combines with the calcium, that phosphorus from the colas, and they deposit in your joints, they deposit in your arteries as you know, plaques, calcium plaques. Mm -hmm. They can also deposit in your kidneys um, and cause inflammation and worsening of kidney function. And they actually is a great way to get kidney stones. So if you're looking for some kidney stones, <laughs> that's oh. a great way to get. So the colas are the devil. They are really a terrible thing for your kidneys. And they're super acid, super, super yeah. acid. That's a, a, you know, I don't know if you if have it ever happened to anybody by chance, dropping a Coca-Cola in the counter. And uh, if you leave it long enough, it will make a, a dent. Um, in your um marble or even like really? granite really yeah. oh my i've heard of you can dissolve a tooth overnight in it but i haven't tried leaving anything um on the countertop to watch it dissolve the countertop yeah <laughs> I, i'll, I'll <laughs> but, take your word from that one yeah but it's true when um even a little drop so acid yeah. it is but the body will buffer it but at the cost mm -hmm. of your health obviously yeah. So other things, right, that we want to avoid <clears throat> are juice. So juice, 
Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not totally empty calories like a soda, mm-hmm. but it has a lot of sugar. It's a, yeah. just think about it, an orange juice. Do you ever squeeze orange juice? It takes about five oranges that you kind of mm-hmm. chug down for like a, what, eight ounces? Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> okay. mm-hmm. So what happened is that um, you don't want those sugar, right? Mm-hmm. Sorry, I have to spray something. I got so dry. Talk some. I understand. <laughs> no, I totally understand. Because when I was when I was growing up, I grew up on soda, and then my next um, issue was switching to fruit juice. So I then did orange juice for a long time, and I was training, and finally I decided to get healthy and healthier, and I gave up the fruit juice, and I switched to water. And it, most the most important thing was shifting my mindset thinking that I had to have that sugar, had to have that kick. And I liked the taste of it too, but everything shifted. I stopped having those highs and lows and I could be more steady throughout the day. And it was quite a bit of a shift. So I really appreciated changing that. But at the time I wasn't thinking about the kidneys and what it could do for me. So I'm really curious on on what you have to say about fruit juice and the kidneys, because I know a lot of kids still drink orange juice for the mornings. You know, you go travel, you, you're at hotels, they offer orange juice, or you're on the plane, they offer apple juice or orange juice. And I, you know, every once in a while, I've, I've fallen in and said, I'll take the apple juice, I need some energy. Um, but I've been really adamant lately on water, water, water. I mean, it's not the end of the world, drinking a little juice in the morning, as long as you don't do a lot, but you said perfectly. The problem is that if you keep drinking things with sugar throughout the day, your insulin spikes really high when you have that huge load of sugar, like a juice, a soda, it's a huge load of sugar. It's much different than a natural, like orange, right? One orange, not like five oranges yeah. without even the fiber, right? To mm-hmm. slow down the absorption. Right. And that is really bad. And that's one of the reasons people gain weight. Even I hear the whole day, but I eat so little. I do eat almost anything. Yeah, but you're eating the wrong things. And one of the things is drinking sugary drinks. But so what I recommend is that um, one thing that people heard by far, like all the time, like drink lemon squeezed in water. That is a nice flavor, but actually helps the kidneys get rid of certain toxins like uh, uric acid that causes gout and joint pain and inflammation in the kidney itself. So make sure like one of your big glasses has like a half lemon squeeze or half lime. It really helps the kidneys get rid of um, uric acid and prevent gout. Okay, that's good to know. Are there other foods that we take, you know, to eat that affect the kidneys for good or bad that you would recommend? So we don't attach exactly to the food, but the more calories you you eat and the more processed food you have, Mm -hmm. the more you overload the kidneys, especially Mm -hmm. sugar. So people that are pre-diabetic, diabetics, which we're talking about carbs, right? Sugar and carbs, especially. And actually overweight, obesity is associated with a risk factor for kidney disease. So diabetes is actually the main reason, the main cause of kidney failure in the world. And high blood pressure is this, well, they're almost pair, pared down. Before it was like 50% hypertension, 40% diabetes. Nowadays it's almost the same. Diabetes is, is actually the biggest toll on the kidney. So I would say sugar, carbohydrates, they don't damage the kidney itself, but causing metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, diabetes, and obesity, it will damage your kidneys from overload, overwork. And of course, the sugar itself attaches to the cells and damage them. Mm-hmm. And with time, the kidneys are just working for two or three of you, right? And, um, and that, just like a person, right? Or, or a car, just think about a car that you just take like once, uh, twice a week, just you to go to the grocery store 10 minutes away, or a car that you drive five people 60 miles every day that car will have a whole lot more wear and tear. Just think about the more carbohydrate you have, the more weight you have, yeah. the more you control your diabetes, the more toll you put on that kidney. It's just a huge wear and tear. It's just like working for three, you burn out. Yeah. So then alongside that, there's a push nowadays for intermittent fasting. 
where maybe you eat for eight hours at a time and then you fast for 16. And part of that 16 hours is you're sleeping. Is that a good process to look at for in terms of your meals to allow your kidneys to have a little bit of time off? So there is no clear association between that, but we know that overall it's a healthy thing to have intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. Hence, you were <clears throat> relatively healthy. So, um, but to be honest, uh, intermittent fasting is associated with actually healing a lot of medical problems, including, mm -hmm. you know, pre-diabetes, even diabetes, if you're not very advanced, mm -hmm. um, obesity. So intermittent fasting is a good thing. Uh, a keto diet, which sometimes people associate with, mm -hmm. tends to be not low, long-term is not super healthy for the kidneys, especially mm -hmm. if your kidneys are not healthy. Mm -hmm. So I do not recommend a keto diet, but I definitely recommend a intermittent fasting. And I do talk about that with my patients mm -hmm. quite a bit. Of course, we talk about, a, you know, you start with like, you know, 12 hours and then you go to 14. I rarely recommend a 16 hour fast because most of the people that show up in my office, they do have some kind of pathology and yeah. it's already difficult for them enough to do 14 hours. So 16 tends to be a challenge, but yeah. I think it's a super beneficial thing that I do recommend for most of my patients. That's interesting. And speaking of diets, I know my father, he had stage three kidney failure. And, you know, he called me up and said, hey, I don't know what to do. I'm at this point, you know, heart failure, kidney failure. I don't know what to do. And I said, well, based on my experience, there's one thing you can do that I know that can help you. And that's change your diet and go plant-based. And I mean, this was right when COVID just hit, you know, it was May, 2020. And his kidney function was at 40% and he was struggling um, swollen legs, pitting edema, you know, just his health has really gone downhill. And so, you know, of course there's always a resistance. I can't do that. You know, he's a, from the Midwest meat and potatoes and, he, you know, he worked in a hog factory and there's just that, that culture around it, but he said, okay, I'll give it a try. And there's definitely some resistance. And as I would expect, cause I, when I switched to plant-based, I had that resistance too. I mean, that's normal human but his kidney function literally improved and now he's no longer considered in kidney failure and he's back up to, I don't know, 70% now. And it's incredible now. And it's interesting for his genetics and his body that worked really well. He's now flourishing in that sense. But I have a friend just recently posted how she went to all animal-based diet and she hasn't had a vegetable in two years. And for me, that's a big shock. She's a young woman. So she didn't have any health issues beforehand. She's a young woman. She looks real thin now. She looks very toned with no, literally no body fat on one bit of her. And I'm curious with a full on animal based diet where she eats organs and only animal products. And she does have some fruit. Like to me, that, you know, I don't know enough about the kidneys to understand how that can impact the kidneys. And I'm curious because I've always seen plants as healing, especially, you know, in the case of my father, I mean, it really was healing. So I'm curious if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, actually there is research showing that when you already have kidney problems, going on a plant-based diet improves your kidneys, just like your father. So that's okay. one of the recommendations that I'm making my office for people to so slowly, I don't tell people right away because the resistance is humongous. People even make formal complaints um, if you tell them to just. So what I recommend is that, so there is plenty of research nowadays associating animal protein to uh, mm -hmm. cancer, cardiovascular disease, and um, how, you, as you said, a plant-based diet is healing is healing. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's very important to have your vegetables and I will tell you more specific what we recommend, but um, mm -hmm. so it's very important that if you have kidney problems, you cut down tremendously the amount of animal protein. So what we're talking about is that no more than four ounces once a day. If you're super like a very, quite a bit of animal not animal lover, obviously, but an animal flesh 
<laughs> eating <Yeah>. over, uh, <laughs> a carnivore, uh -huh. uh, what I recommend is that limit for two portions of four ounces per day, but that includes everything. That already includes your dairy. So of course you're talking about milk, creamer, mm -hmm. yogurt, mm -hmm. cheese, ice cream, butter, everything that is animal based mm -hmm. no more than two four ounce portions per day so kind of the palm of your hand the center palm of your hand so let's say if you have like bacon and eggs in the morning make sure it's not more than four ounces and then one of the meals meals you are not gonna eat animal maybe you have your salad with chicken or even cut down to two ounces here and two ounces there but no more than that ideally someone with more kidney <clears throat> And then I would say that's for general population. And I'll tell you exactly why. No more than two, four ounce portions per day because animal protein is extremely acid, extremely acid in the body. And that's one of the functions of the kidneys, uh, it, um, balancing out the pH in our body, right? Our body is mostly alkaline. Our normal pH is between 7.3, 6, 7.4, 4, 2, it's all 7.38. And that is something the body like we'll fall a limb in order to keep that balance because an acid body, uh, the heart doesn't function properly. The muscles don't function properly. Your brain doesn't function properly. You really need, you, we have a very tight, a very narrow balance, uh, alkaline balance. But the thing is that nowadays, and that's how people are getting so, so sick, even as young people, because our diet is horrendously acid. What are the acid functions in our diet? Protein mm -hmm. and carbohydrates, sugar. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of people, and that's the problem with your friend, just eating animals mostly, mm -hmm. because the load of acid in her body, she is buffering that. Her kidneys will produce bicarbonate to buffer that. But if she's so extreme, she is just consuming so much acid and, and almost no alkaline that comes from fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. that she is really consuming her bones and her teeth and really losing a lot of calcium there okay. um, and not getting enough because the best calcium absorption you get is actually from the plants, from vegetables, right? Like kale, spinach um, and fruits. Mm -hmm. So she definitely will later in life, her joints will be and her bones would not be very healthy probably because of the acid load, the continuous acid load that she's doing. Um, and, and there's, a, a, I think, a mis, misunderstanding of people. Uh, vegetables does not equal carbs. Yeah. <laughs> of yeah. course, if you just eat potato, yeah. <clears throat> the carbs that we get is actually not from vegetables itself, but from mostly the grains. So, the, and the problem is that we have a lot of processed grains, mm -hmm. um, you know, right? Wheat, rice, um, um, oats and barley, and there is just a whole lot of it, yeah. not even in moderation. The problem is that how much like a, a salad has in carbs, almost nothing. If you're talking about the vegetable, the leafy yeah. vegetables, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the carbs, when you talk about vegetables come from processed grains, or if you eat a lot of roots, right? That has more carbs, but um, <clears throat> I would totally recommend add a whole lot more of leafy vegetables to the diet because you're not really getting those carbs. You're getting almost nothing of carbs there, but you're getting a whole lot of phytonutrients, of um, enzymes and vitamins and minerals that it was made, right? Made by design, but whoever made for us to consume in balance, and even the most carnivore of uh, the humans, just think about it. How many humans, when we didn't have technology at all to hunt, let's say a tiger, mm -hmm. how many humans to hunt any kind of animal we took? I'll, well, think about me and you. Yeah. Are you able to hunt any kind of animal to eat? No. I'm not. <laughs> no, I don't have that skill. <laughs> I think it's pretty hard actually to get a big animal to feed a whole tribe, right? Mm -hmm. That didn't happen, happen very often, obviously. Right. Yeah. So we ate a whole lot more fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And um, we need a whole lot more. And of course, even if you discuss, like, and if you want to talk about how it was in the past, like, you know, I talk about thousands of years mm -hmm. ago, research, clinical research shows that <clears throat> even if you have one egg per week, the only animal protein you get is one egg per week, 
your chances of prostate cancer and breast cancer increases like double or triple compared to completely vegan people. Mm -hmm. So it, it's pretty well established, even though people don't talk that much about it. Of course, there is the interest of a uh, food industry, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Huge, huge amount of money. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess all this, and there are plenty of people that are thinks it's absurd. What do you mean you're asking me to stop eating my eggs and my chicken and more in my beef, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they go and find all kinds of uh, things. But the problem is that you can convince people that yes, you need your meat. Convince people that are malnourished. Obviously you benefit from nutrition. If you're just eating a bunch of processed food that's just like rich in sugar and grains, processed grains. Yeah, you're better off, I guess, eating meat than just eating processed food but you're much better off eating a diet that is plant-based, that you have yeah. those eight servings of vegetables per day. Yeah, yeah. Eight and two servings variety. of fruit. Yeah, totally get that. Yeah, the variety that you get when you eat plant-based is phenomenal. So I'm curious also with, in terms of kidneys, does sleep in, impact kidney function? And do we have any knowledge on how those two are related? Um, not that I know of, no, no direct, no direct correlation, but what we know is that a bad quality of sleep, especially if you don't sleep enough, you don't have, or a good quality sleep first, you don't get enough recovery, right? It's, it's when the body recovers, clean up kind of the brain, clean up everything when you have recovery in your body. So in Overall, for health, you know, it's very important. But mm -hmm. one problem that you are going to see affecting your kidneys is sleep apnea. Those people that snore loudly and it seems they stop breathing. And that's why most people snore because they stop breathing for a while. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that will increase your blood pressure, increase your chances of heart arrhythmia, heart failure, okay. and all of that does interfere with your kidney. Okay. It's a, <clears throat> those are risk factors for you know, kidney disease. I don't know if you want to talk more about sleep, but another thing that we talk about, and there's plenty of research is that exercise, any type of exercise, even as little as like 15 minutes, three, four, preferably half an hour, five times a week, yeah. will improve um, the chances of your kidneys uh, stabilizing or the life of your kidneys for longer. We don't know exactly how that is related, but we see that people that exercise they do preserve their kidneys for much longer than people that do not exercise. That's fascinating. And so how many times per week for how long? So ideally there is like, you know, the best benefit is half an hour, five times okay. a week, but as little as a high intensity interval exercise of 15 minutes, three times a week will give you benefits, okay. which is nothing, right? I always tell my yeah. patients, put in perspective, we have 1,440 minutes per day. 1,440. Uh -huh. We do not spend more than 440 min 40 minutes between like basics, right? Sleeping, eating, and showering. Mm -hmm. Let's say that. So we have a thousand minutes in a day to allocate wisely that time. So you want to tell me that you don't have 15 minutes to <laughs> exercise? That's absurd, right? That's really Just good way to perspective. Put it. Yeah. And that's my coach part of my being a doctor in, in my office. And now that's how I get some good outcomes. I have plenty of patients that come and um, I never promise them anything. I just tell them, look, we need to get into a habit of drinking water. And of course, I give all the tips on how to get that done. Yeah. And of course, you go slowly because someone that do not drink more than one glass a day, how you get them to do 64. You go yeah. slowly, obviously. Like mm -hmm. this week, we're going to make a goal of making sure you drink at least eight ounces in the morning, eight ounces in the afternoon, and eight ounces in the evening. Just for this week, just eight out, three eight ounces glass. That's it. That's it. So you focus that for one week or two, maybe. <clears throat> the next week, we're going to add a fourth eight ounce glass. And then we go slowly by slowly, focusing on one thing, right? Yeah. And of course, we have all the other tips on how to, you know, have a visual on it, have those, you know, bottles that have markings, something that's right in front of you put an alarm and then of course substituting any painkiller that's the anti-inflammatories mm -hmm. to either Tylenol and of course we're going to go do whatever it takes to fix the problem because pain yeah. is a problem right we have to fix it and we go after it right whatever you need we go 
after it. And then of course, I'll talk about the diet. Make sure we're not gonna do more than two, four ounce portions of animal protein per day. And then start adding the vegetables you like, a lot of it. And you know a great side effect of that? A whole lot of patients come back in three months to see me to check on their kidneys and they lost 10 pounds, 15 pounds. Isn't that awesome? I know, I know. Yeah. No one is going to be upset about that. That's a great no. side benefit, yeah. That's wonderful. So you mentioned that you can work with people. So how can people reach you? Because you also have a course that you're developing as well, right? Yeah, so, um, well, I, I am a full-fledged doctor, right? I work right. as a physician. I, I not only do nephrology, but I do primary care as well nowadays. Okay. Okay. And um, I, I, I live in Massachusetts, so I see patients in, it's called Mill City Medical in Lowell, okay. Massachusetts. Okay. And then, um, and you can find easily, right? Just Google it, Mill mm-hmm. City Medical in Lowell. Mm-hmm. And um, I also have my course. I have an Instagram and a Facebook channel okay. that is at DRA Tatiana Tom. Okay. Um, but those channels are in Portuguese. I'm Brazilian, right? And um, mm-hmm. I decided to serve <clears throat> the Portuguese community, mm-hmm. talking about about that, right? About yeah. detoxing your body. And I have a course on that. And okay. also, I I'm uh, launching pretty soon a course on mentality, which is like you know how how you see life mm-hmm. and how you keep your health with that. Yeah. Not only your body, <clears throat> right? Your physical health, but <clears throat> No, I apologize. Your mental health, your peace, mm-hmm. and your energy, and your mm-hmm. vitality. And uh, that's the main focus of my channel, which for now is in Portuguese, but pretty soon I'll be, hopefully in 2023, I'll be launching it in English as well. I was just going to ask you, when are you going to have it in English? And <laughs> so can people who are not Portuguese speaking, are they able to reach out and maybe be put on a waiting list? for when your yeah. course launches in English? Can they still yeah. reach out to you? Yeah, sure, of course. Both on, on both um, both on Facebook or especially Instagram, which is okay. the hub, let's say. Okay. Um, you can obviously send messages in English, which I have plenty of people sending okay. and okay. Um, will def- definitely keep you posted. Okay, wonderful. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to share with us today. So much amazing information. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, super welcome. It's such a pleasure. And uh, I definitely want to spread the word how, you know, you keep your, your kidneys healthy, how you keep your body healthy, how you get more energy and more vitality and um, yeah. be a happier person. Yeah, totally agree. We need more happy in this world. So yeah. thank you all for joining us today. Really appreciate your time and you have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you again next weekend. Bye now.